Hi there, and welcome to another Cigar Advisor Cigar Review panel, Cigar Review. I'm Gary Korb, Executive Editor for CigarAdvisor.com, and today we've got a really nice big cigar to smoke. It is the Bolivar Cofradia Churchill. Yes, very nice, very nice. And because this is a long smoking son of a gun, I'm going to get right to the panel. So we want to say hello to Jared Gulick, Cigar Advisor Copywriter, and Cigar Advisor Managing Editor, John Pulo. So... Hello, Welcome, hello. guys. Once again, we are together. What's up? Nice, nice having... to see you and to be seen. Yes. That's right. We are socially distanced by miles. Counties, even. That's how into yeah. it we are. So. Like at least 150 or something. Like that. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> yeah. we could do a geography lesson. <laughs> so anyway, we have this beautiful looking and big uh, Bolivar Cofradia Churchill. And uh, let's just get to some of the stats on it real quick. Uh, it is made at the Hatsa, that's H-A-T-S-A, -S factory in Don Lee, Honduras. And it is a seven and a quarter by 54. I'm going to talk about mm -hmm. that, what that means later. But um, the strength, I'd say, is you guys can chime in here if you want. Medium plus, say, or medium, medium plus. I think that's fair. I'd say medium, but I'm on board with it, so. Yeah, okay. Um, the wrapper is an Ecuador Sumatra. It's dark, and it has a nice uh, even color to it, at least on mine. Uh, mine is nicely rolled. And the binder is Connecticut Broadleaf, which, you know, I think General uses Connecticut Broadleaf as binder in a couple of their cigars. And uh, the filler is uh, Honduras and Nicaragua. The other thing I like about the cigar is it was uh, made by... Uh, blended by Estelo Padron, who is Orlando Padron's brother. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so those guys kind of split up. One guy went to General, the other guy went to uh, did his own thing. Anyway, he's he's made some of their finest cigars. Uh, General, I, I I believe he's passed away, but uh, and so is Orlando. But um, wonderful guy, wonderful blender, and um, there really is a lot of background information on this cigar. You know, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's the name Bolivar is the classic when it comes to Cuban cigars. And um, have you guys had Cuban Bolivars? I think once, like five years ago. Yeah. But I'm, 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 it's not really, uh, not my area of expertise. If I did, it was probably fake. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I saw, I saw the meme yesterday. And, um, I had one many years ago, and I remember it pretty fondly, actually. And uh, I, but I don't know if it's fair to make comparisons, but maybe we'll get into that later. And it's also available in uh, not just the Churchill, but four other sizes. It's a, there's a Petite Corona, which is the smallest. That's a four and a half by 36. Uh, then we have a Robusto, which is five by 54. A Toro, which is six by 54. And then there's a Torpedo that's six and a half by 50. And then, of course, this Churchill, which is seven and a quarter, again, by 54. So there's something about the 54 ring they, they seem to like in this line. So anyway, construction-wise, you guys kind of, John's already gotten going here in his. Um, really nicely packed, so is Jared, I see. So I got to catch up. But it's really well packed all the way down. It's got a really nice cap, if you can see it there. Nicely done. It's a really, really well-made scar. I mean, all the stuff that Estello is responsible for is really top, top notch. And he worked mostly in Honduras, too. That's why it's made at Hatza. Let's see how the drawer is here. And, you know, you said this was Ecuador Sumatra. I mean, there are some, I've seen other uh, Sumatra. Some might call this a squirrel. Uh, but, you know, I, I, the, the, the leaf looks a little more on the velvety side as opposed to the oily side. So, well, what are the first, since you guys got a head start on me, what are some of the early flavors you got, Jared? Maybe you want to start with the pre-light, if you remember. Uh... Pre-light is very, like, I don't know if you guys are getting this, but it's got a lot of molasses-type flavors to me in the pre-light. Now we're talking cold drum, okay? But uh, yeah. pretty quickly, I get a lot of coffee. I get a lot of, like, this... I wrote this in my copy, but it's this leafy green flavor that it's it's not like lettuce or any other veg. It's right. just this leafy green type of flavor to it that's just fresh. It's 
very fresh. You know? Okay. Mine was is was more earthy and I mean almost to the point where it was like mineral like stone. Uh, you know, okay. that that kind of kind of that kind of sensation uh, going on. A little bit of wheat. It it was the, the cold draw was sweet on the lips. Um, mm-hmm. and if you, you know, if you smell it, like just smell it before you light it up. It was almost like peanutty, but a little bit more rich than peanutty. Mm-hmm. You know, like thanks, thanks, shelled peanuts, something like that. But it just had a little bit more to it than that. You know, yeah, but I, you know, once you we get into the actual flavors, uh, you know, I think you know, the leather shows up, the earth shows up, the charred oak comes in pretty quick. At least it did for me. Yeah, I'm actually getting a little bit of pepper here in the uh, first few puffs, but I'm getting some of that earthiness and some of that leather and some a little, even a little salt and. Uh, just, you know, that nuttiness, uh, it's, 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 got, it's got some nice flavors in it throughout. I mean, my sample that I smoked yesterday, actually, um, mm-hmm. was, was, was about the same, you know, especially with the little pepper at the beginning and then, it, you know, kind of just round it That's out. Interesting. That's interesting. Also, <laughs> did why, why, did you fi- why did you find it interesting, Jared? Because I, I think it's, it's very rare that all three of us have a different experience. Um, we're, okay. we're, we're usually a little closer than this. Um, mine is like I said, yeah. coffee and butter, but I'm also getting like that leafy greens and spices. I'm not, I didn't get the, the nutty aroma off of it, but I'm getting a little bit of a, a nutty flavor later down the, the pipeline. Uh, but okay. uh, it's interesting that all three of us have a different take on this, but they, they do share some common out in that earthiness, okay. you know? Yeah. Well, that's, that's probably, uh, you know, more to do with the, uh, Honduran tobacco in here, and Sumatra yeah. is a little spicy. Yeah. And, um, now, I'm ahead. curious, Jared. Gary mentioned that he could actually taste a little bit of the spice or pepper, whatever it was, right in front. What I mean, have you noticed any pepper or spice? You're probably about what a quarter to a, a, a half an inch in at this point. Half an inch in, yeah. I'm getting some pepper, uh, but it's not. Uh, you know, it's one of the things. Like I mentioned it, but you yeah. know, it, it, it's not overarching. It's not, uh, it's not prominent yet, but, um, mm. it, and it kind of comes back later on again, you know, to, to give a little bit of a preview, but this is yeah. not an overly peppery cigar in my opinion at all. I was just going to say, you know, for as much as you took, you know, Gary laid out this big blend, um, you know, Ecuador, Sumatra, Honduras, Nicaragua, uh, you know, even with the, uh, he said Connecticut broadleaf in the binder, right? Mm-hmm. I was really struck by, you know, not only this size and this in the, you know, I've three or four of these now. I'm really struck by how much spice there is not right. in the first half of this cigar. I agree. Especially given what's on the, what's on the, uh, what's on the menu, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? So, well, you know, the fact that it's, it's not that bitey, it's, it seems to be more rich and earthy than it does yeah. spending time on yeah. any spice or anything. But I did, right. you know, it was, a, let, let, let's put it this way. It was a, a fleeting note. Okay. Fleeting note. All right. That, <laughs> a pepper I'll, I'll, just I'll to kind it. of let me know that there's something going on there. And then it just kind of sure. goes away. And now it's a very um, homogenous kind of mix of uh, earth and, and cedar and a little bit of sweet spice coming in there. I guess I would, you know, I did find the cigar to be a little more on the sweet side, which is what I like. And I think the Connecticut Broadleaf Binder probably has something to do with that. And um, okay. I mean, maybe some of the Nicaraguan in here is Jalapa. And, you know, I mean, you know, it's, you can, Jerry and I went through this last week when we did our cigar. You know, you can try to guess what's in here, but, you know, unless you're like uh, yeah. Ernesto Carrillo or somebody, uh, <laughs> it's hard to know what you're Yeah, I would, I would imagine there's, there's some, some higher, uh, higher octane stuff in here but I think that it's been aged a little bit. That would be my guess. So we have some, we have some, you know, high primings, but it's, it's mm-hmm. had a chance to rest. I would imagine there's some, some lengthy sleep involved. <laughs> well, I'll tell you one thing that's impressive about the cigar, if nothing else, that the, the MSRP is under $7. It's six fifty at the yeah. time we, re- we recorded this, of course. Um, so this so size that's, here, that's pretty this nice. Size. Yeah, six fifty. 
that's the MSRP, not the famous discount price, but the actual. Wow. So, you know, and I think the box right now, and what's nice about the box is it's a box of 25, which you don't really get too much anymore. Yeah. And that's in all the sizes. And uh, the box, um, I mean, I'll have to give an average price because you don't know when, you know, it's going to happen in the future. But right now it's about 147 bucks for a box, at, which is about 10% off the uh, list. For 25. So, even even with a list, which is like 160 something, I think it's it's really yeah right. Yeah, I was going to say even at list price, this would be this would be a no brainer. You know, this is it's flavor for cost right. ratio is pretty pretty high in your favor as a customer. So you know? so we got some value going on here. Okay. Yeah, I was surprised to see that. So um, hmm. you know, um, I like the scar. You know what? Um, I kind of like the band too. You know, the, you like the band? It, it echoes the Cuban, <laughs> you know, which is always nice. Uh, what, what do you have to say about it, Mister? <laughs> All right. Well, I don't mean to, you know. Is his head too tiny? I don't. I don't need. I don't mean to relieve myself in your Cheerios here, but you know, uh, the thing. I, I just it, when I look at this band, I just I look at it and it's just kind of like, if you look at it close, the the drawing's not great. You know, it's like a. It just, it, it kind of looks cheap. But the thing about it is, is it's one of those situations where it, you would, you might even pass by it looking at it in a row of cigars in a store. But this is exactly why you should try things before you look at them and just make a judgment based off of their aesthetics. Because it's like John and I were talking about, there's way more value here. Uh, in the flavor, in the smoking experience, and how good it tastes, than you're ever going to get from how this looks. And I'm sorry, I know you said you like the band, but to me, it's just kind of like, eh. mm. <laughs> I do because it looks like the Cuban, but so, so, so but what you're saying is kind of like a, 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 a caricaturist took a, a, a shot at Simone Bolivar here. I, do, I don't see it. <laughs> yeah, like it's you know, if it comes up on Antiques Roadshow, it's not going to have a high valuation. You know what I mean? <laughs> Okay, I got you. It's six fifty. I can tell you that. No, but right. um, but look at the look at this beautiful ash we got here. Uh, you know, I would say maybe it just looks small or or cheap. I don't know because it's again such a big cigar. But I like it. So I'm well, I, I think that's part of it too. I mean, you know, as, as you're talking about burn, this is, is burn straight enough. You know, but I mean, it's stack it up nice. Yeah, uh, yeah. Some good color, good color on it. I mean, I haven't had a tap it yet, and it doesn't look like it's ready to let go. Um, you know, we've kind of settled into the better part of an inch here. We got any other flavors that are starting to uh, make themselves obvious? Yeah, uh, I was going to say that it's, it's starting to sweeten up now a little bit. I'm getting more of a getting less earthiness and more of like a honeyed flavor. You know, more like a, like Jared said, kind of a molasses. Not not real, not real strong, but it's getting there. It's definitely mm -hmm. sweeter, and it's uh, getting more of that woody note, that nuttiness, and uh, I, re I really like this cigar, to be honest with you. I, I, I had it also in the, the Robusto, which I thought was really nice, too, and uh, mm -hmm. similar flavor, similar character, you know. How well, about you? you, know, you get? Well, we've, we've had, actually, this uh, a chance to sample most of the range. Uh, you said the smallest was a petite Corona. I think it was. You said it was a 36. I mean, that's a pretty petite, petite. Yeah, that's that's small. Oh, yeah. You know, that's that's almost cigarillo size. But you know, <laughs> I would say after after having sampled that, and then the opposite end of the spectrum, here we are here at 54 by eight and a half miles long. Mm -hmm. Is it, you, <laughs> would you say that after sampling the entire lineup? You know, can you make any generalizations about this Boulevard, whether, you know, small ring gauge versus large ring, large ring gauge, yes. uh, size, short, long? I mean, what, what would you say there? Yeah, uh, at least for me, and I don't speak for everyone, but yep. I noticed, which is complete opposite to what I normally, uh, you know, how, what I normally find in cigars, I find that the larger ring gauges offer a lot more. Uh, there, there's better flavor. Uh, they smoke a little cooler, and that comes with the size anyway. But I, I, the, the smaller ring gauges for the cigar just did not hit the spot for me. Uh, it was – I'm not going to say they were bad, but they weren't they weren't noteworthy. They weren't for, for you. you know. Right. Yeah. All right. Gary, would you say there's one generalization you could make one way or the other? I, I think this is a little big than I would normally smoke.
but it tastes really good. I thought the Robusto was very good. And I had the Torpedo also. Um, so I'd say, um, you know, definitely the 54 rings, although the Torpedo's a 50, are definitely, you know, nice for this blend for me anyway. And I kind of like a 54 ring anyway. But um, so I guess I would have to agree maybe the bigger sizes are the way to go in this. And maybe that's one of the reasons they did three of them in 54. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Any guys retro hail this yet? Yeah. What do you think? There's a little bit of spice in there, but again, not, not striking me as like the pepperiest of the bunch here. It's just, it's, it's, it's not smooth, but it's, it doesn't bite either. It's somewhere in between the two, you know, it's just got this right. nice layer of spice in there that doesn't hit too hard. Yeah. 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 What else it kind of, uh, I, I noticed that, that a little bit of bite to it, but also kind of like an oaky sensation, you know, I, we're so used to having cedar be so synonymous with the, with, you know, with cigars. This one's really like, think oak, oak barrel, you know, that kind of stuff. And it, it's, it's kind of got, a, it's a little bit drier, and a, a little sturdier than, you know, that, that aging room kind of smell. Right. Well, John, you know, it's interesting you just said that because this does have a bit of a dry finish to it. It's not. A, a yeah, you know, and, and I noticed. Which is fine. And, and some, I mean, well, some of the sweetness that I'm getting is kind of, it reminds me of that tannic sensation on the finish of a wine, right? So if you. If you're mm -hmm. drinking a glass of red wine, and it's got kind of a fruity finish, but it's also got a drying finish. Those are the tannins from, from the wood and the barrel and, and, the, and then the wine. Right. And it's kind of got some of that same drying yet sweet, woody. And that's, again, you know, a lot of most wine is done in oak barrels. Um, so that, that's not a surprise to get those flavors kind of together, at least for me. How about you, Jared? What are you getting? So about this point for me, it's it's gotten a little – see, it's interesting. Again, we're having a little bit of, a bit of difference here. So mine is a little bit buttery, you know, it's it, but it's more of – instead of the flavor, it's like the texture of the smoke in my mouth. It just – it feels like it's just coating my mouth, mm -hmm. you know. And it's, very, it's just a, a creaminess that – normally I associate creaminess with flavor. But this time it's texture mm -hmm. like there. And I like that about the cigar that it's got, a, you know, not every cigar has a texture that's worth talking about. It's not something we talk about often, but it was very prominent for me. Uh, and it's just, you know, another layer to appreciate on on the cigar. And I think it's great all the way through. But that's what I'm getting right now. What about you, Gary? Yeah, I agree. Mine's been very, very creamy. And so is the one I had yesterday. And um yeah, it does. It does kind of give you a nice, you know, textured feeling, I guess, on on, on the palate. Um, but also, this one seems a little more on the medium to the mellow side for me today. How you know, the other one yesterday was was had a little bit more, uh, you know, a little more, more balls to it. I don't know. Hmm. How about you? Oh, I, I wonder if it just. Yeah. Had, I just wonder if it if it hasn't reared its ugly head to you yet. As far as the some of the nicotine strength or something like that, because you know, if if there's one thing I notice, you know, in this, you know, having smoked our fair share of them now, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. you know, it's pre it's pretty fuller body, but it more so in the second half, uh, you know, it really plants its flag for me. What you know, once I get past the halfway mark, yeah, you know, and it's it it's not aggressive. Uh, but it's it's going to kind of point you in a direction of how you're going to smoke the cigar for the rest of the time you're spending with it, as opposed to, you know, you dictating the pace. So I like how you said that it's not aggressive, because the funny thing is, when I was doing the write-up for this, I was thinking about who the cigar is for. And yeah. immediately I just went to, I think, I think new smoke, newer, I should say newer, not brand new, newer smokers would latch on to this but especially like people who are smoking occasionally because a this doesn't this doesn't set you back at all in terms of price uh b it, it's right. like you said perfectly not aggressive but i think it also leads me to believe that you know it's the longer you've been smoking the harder it is to make that call because what what's strong to us is probably super strong to some others you know and and vice versa <laughs> so. yeah 
Well, you know, I'm glad you kind of brought that up because it's something I kind of have had a little bit of an epiphany about lately. Uh, you know, for as much as we've been seeing some fuller bodied cigars and, you know, the tendency of some people or some places to say, oh, well, well this is something you got to you got to work your way up to this. You know, like cigar smoking is hard to do or something. You know, I you know, it's it's not hard. It's enjoyable. You know, so if, if you're new to it, just to be aware, like I said a few minutes ago, the cigar is really going to dictate how you smoke it. OK, not not you. You know, so this is like bourbon. This is like wine. Um, you know, you just have to get accustomed to the taste. You have to get accustomed to the experience like bourbon, for instance. OK, if I take a sip of bourbon, you know, I'm still not very good at it, <laughs> you know, so it's still got a lot of burn and a lot of bite. You know, so if it burns going down, I know to tell myself to go a little bit slower, take a smaller sip, let it, you know, kind of wash around a little bit longer before it goes down. You know, otherwise it's going to really, you know, spice up, you know, my throat or something like that. Same for a cigar. A cigar burns hot, cigar burns fast, slow down, take a shallower puff. You know, it's it, the, the cigar, the drink, the whatever uh, is going to dictate it. So if it's if it's fuller body, just take your time. You know, if it's too spicy, just don't hit it so hard, you know, or something like that. But, you know, I, I'm glad you're saying that somebody who is new to cigars can get this, can get behind this. Because, you know, I think once you're accustomed to a fuller smoke, it's just going to take you a couple of times to do it. Like, I, I'm still working on getting better at bourbon. You know, right. then you can then you can roll the smoke just like you would, the, you know, the drink across your across your palate. And that's how you develop your sense of taste. That's how you develop your your, your ability to detect some of the nuances and stuff like that. That's so, some great yeah, insight. I mean, great insight. Uh, it's, I, I'm just glad we're finally talking about, you know, breaking out of the idea that just because it's full, you know, you got to have your 10-year membership card or something. Like that. I'm just – I'm super guilty of that. <laughs> I'm guilty. Well, I, I, think, I think we all have. I think yeah. we all have. But it's just like, you know what? If you kind of sit back and enjoy it, and maybe it's just because I've been able to sit back and enjoy them a little bit more, uh, you know, maybe I'm realizing that it's it's kind of up to the cigar to tell me, you know, how it's best enjoyed. You know, I mean, that's, yeah, that's well, just a thought. It's just kind of what's been coming to me lately about this. Yeah, I, I had a similar experience uh, when I smoked the sample. I just I just try to take my time. I mean, I knew it was going to be a long smoke, but. Mm. I really try to take my time with it. And I did my little Steve Saka, you know, it's a too hot test, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and actually this one's pretty cool. Um, but you know, I just really let it smoke itself in a sense. And it was much better. It mm -hmm. really was much better. And I think, I think it should take your time with almost all cigars really, but yeah, yep. but I like what you said about that. And I was also had in my notes that it's a very straightforward cigar. Um, and I think every level of, of experience, you definitely, you know, maybe if you only like full body stuff, forget it. But you know, if you want, you know, if you're newer and you want to try a bowl of our, you know, Honduran version, you know, this is, uh, this would be nice. Yeah, I think, I think this is a case where just because it says full or medium full or whatever it says mm -hmm. on the tag or the website or the label or whatever, so what? Throw caution to the wind. You know what? Sometimes, you so sometimes the circumstances dictate a really stiff drink. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, if you want to try a really beefy cigar, then go for it. Yeah, we, we have it listed as medium, which I think I think is pretty accurate. And that's again, that's my I personal do, I agree. Thing. Yeah. But I I you know, I in you know, researching the cigar and looking into it, you know, I hit a couple other websites of our competitors and stuff, and like a, a couple of them were calling this just you know straight up full, and I'm like, no, uh, no. no. This I, I uh, this is that. yeah, I, I don't buy it either. And and I think sometimes some uh play fast and loose trying to get the sale because it's what's in vogue you know <laughs> but no, it's, uh, it's just it's easy to compartmentalize it as right. uh, you know okay it's boulevard it's full it's you know cuban-esque right. it's right. you know it's a big exactly. you know, it's full, you know. i don't remember the uh, the cuban i i had so many years ago being very full either i had to put a couple of feelers out because i'm i'm no expert uh when mm -hmm. it comes to cubans and uh i hit up our friend kevin Okay. And I know Kevin has a has a, a, a good number of boulevards in his uh, humidor. And I oh, said, yeah. um, I said, hey, you know, do me a favor and tell me, you know, would you say that there's a particular profile that Bolivar is known for? And you know, so he emailed he emailed me back here and he said, 
Um, and so yes, I said, would Boulevard, does it have a particular profile? He said, that's a tough one. It's, it's one of the earthier, spicier Cubans, but it huh. has a creamier floral profile and a sour tang that's typical for some Cubans. So I, I would say this is probably 60, 60% of the way there. I don't notice that tang, that no. sour tang. I'm, I'm not getting the floral no. part of it, but you know, the spice, well, later on, the earth, most definitely. Uh, and you're mentioning, Jared, the creamy part of it. So, uh, you know, I could, I could see where it's a representation of it as opposed yeah. to a duplication. Of it. It's like a decent cover, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Right. I'll, I'll go back. So uh, we were talking about liquor before. What would this be good to pair with? John, you want to go first? Ooh. What are you drinking now? Anything with uh, Drinking anything now with it? No, just, I'm just have a, a some seltzer left over from lunch. Um, but I I would probably consider because it's so woody, you might even be able to get away with a uh, a whiskey, a Scotch whiskey that's a little bit peaty because uh, okay. I would go with that. I'd go with the earthy woody uh, taste. If you wanted to go more sweet, then I would say probably a, a rum. Okay. Jared? Um, I, I mean, I, I was thinking about what I wanted to pair this with, and um, the more I thought about it, and I was just taking a shot in the dark, I before we started, I brewed up some tea. And uh, I, I think it goes very well. For those of you who are still sweltering in summer, uh, us up here in the mountains, it's starting to get cold. <laughs> so <laughs> having something warm to drink is, uh, <laughs> you know. It's, yeah, it's, 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 it's 85 nice. degrees where I am. Jared has a winter weather warning. They're getting right, right. snow in Denver. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, like it, it, it's dropped down. It's already dropped down into like the the high forties up here. Like the other night, uh, yeah. You know, like oh, yeah. it's getting a little brisk. But it's starting. It's starting to get chilly. But I think tea. Uh, whether this is a perfect pairing, I, I just took a shot in the dark. I'm enjoying it, and yeah. I think I think there is. I think this cigar has, and I talked about this leafy greens, but it has this refreshing. I don't know if I would quite call it herbal but it's just got this refreshing quality to it that just tea is kind of a no-brainer for and it's, it's so far it's been a good parent so well i'm having iced tea with it and yeah. um, oh, there you go. it's it's the half and half uh, iced tea lemonade uh, mix which i'm not a big iced tea guy but i like it with the lemonade and it's actually i've smoked i smoked it I've, I've had that um, half and half lemonade iced tea with a couple of cigars, and even though it's a little yeah. sweet, it's not bad. You know, it's it's kind of good. Is that the so, Arnold Palmer? Yeah, <laughs> but you know, um, I bought it for my son, and then he went off to college, and I said I don't really drink this stuff. And then I was so uh, thirsty the other uh, night. I said, Oh God, I, I don't want water. Yeah. I got water all day, and I'm gonna. You, and I said, hey, This is pretty good. Yeah, I think he so, made more money off of iced tea than he did golfing. You know? Yeah, so. he did. <laughs> but as far as the uh, pairing, I would I would agree with John. You know, uh, this is definitely I think more of a bourbon kind of a drink, or even something. You know, uh, I don't know, Jared. You like beer? I mean, this this could go with beer. I think this goes with just about anything, really. Even even a wine. Yeah, I mean, I could I could see some beers. I would just I, I wouldn't I wouldn't overthink it. I just wouldn't go like you know in the stout territory or anything like that i would just keep it mm -hmm. keep it light keep it keep it uh you know keep it amber and light and you'll be fine mm -hmm. you know actually a, a wheat might be good with this yeah because yeah. it's a little on the creamier side because i yeah. think if you went if you went an ipa it might be a little too hoppy and it kind of blow the yeah. taste out of the water oh yeah don't no ipas are never good i'm sorry i'm i, I said it yes i said it <laughs> <laughs> I'm enjoying it a lot. How, how far are you guys down? I mean, it's uh, we're not going to be here the full two hours, folks. I can tell no, you that. No. Yeah, I'm I'm about down to a Toro size now. This is a lot of cigar. So you know what? This is the other thing too. Um, consider this if you're if you have a, a late season tea time. This might be decent to enjoy on the course. It's not so overpowering that the, you know it's not so hot. You know, you can. Uh, it's it's a good flavorful cigar for the for the probably the last year, at least the back nine, and loading your clubs into the car. The dimensions on this seven and a quarter by fifty four are the same as the very popular golf cigar Excalibur number one. And I and I thought that this would be a great 
cigar. If you like that, you might like this too because um, it is about the same size and it's just, it's a nice long cigar and it's maybe got a little more going on with it in some ways um, than the Excalibur. So it's a you know, different, different flavor. You know, just wanna try something different than your usual number one. This would be a nice substitute. So I wanted to say that, but anyway, I guess it's time to wrap things up. John, final thoughts from you, please. Well, the, considering this thing burns for like nine years, it's so big. <laughs> um, you know, there's, uh, we, uh, we've said it multiple times, but it's worth saying one more. You know, I think there's value in the size. You, you get more than what you're paying for here. It's a cool, slow burner. Um, there are a couple points at which I think that this boulevard generates some spicy heat, but it never really goes wild or anything like that. But, you know, pretty medium, medium plus, uh, you know, and like I said before, really plants its flag for the second half um, as far as body goes. It just kind of gets a little bit more rich as time goes on, and I think, you know, kind of ramps it up towards the end. Uh, which is nice and, and you know, kind of dictates the pace. But, you know, overall, cost-effective, uh, you know, some nice sturdy flavors. Um, and I could see, you know, spending a nice two hours uh, with, a, with a good cocktail with this. Garrett, final thoughts? Yeah, my final thoughts on the cigar, I, I want to talk a little bit about the complexity because – um, you know, I know we, we've beaten the horse to death about that. It's different things to different people, but mm -hmm. something interesting I found about the cigar is that if you really pay attention, if you sit back and, and, and notice everything that's going on, it's really complex. There's a lot of slight little changes that happen, a lot of nuance to the cigar. And I was thinking about it and, and I had this kind of like you had an epiphany, John, of how cigars can be like racetracks. Like some, some cigars are drag strips. It's point A to point B, one speed. Some cigars are like an oval track. You get a couple, you get four changes, but this is like the Monaco Grand Prix for me. Like it just oh, changes really? every couple minutes. Uh, there's something else going on. And I wouldn't say it's the most complex cigar I've ever had, but to, you know, double down on what we've all been talking about so much about how much value there is in the cigar for such a, a, a modest price range. I just, I can't gush about it enough. Uh, you know, and, and it might sound insincere, but it really is sincere uh, that it's it's just it, cigars that give this much at this price are very few and far between. Wow. So high up one's Jared's list. Nice. Yeah. All right. Well, I, Gary, what do you I, think? I agree. This, this is a terrific value. Number one. Number two, it's 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 got it's got a lot of good things happening for it. I mean, especially at this price point, and it's got great construction. It's got some nice flavor. It's it's uh, you know uh, accessible to anyone who's either just starting out or someone who just who's not not starting out anymore, but likes you know this kind of a medium body, straightforward cigar with uh, three or four really nice key flavors in it. It certainly has a lot of the flavors I like. So um. I'm pretty, I'm pretty pleased with it. And I think like, again, I, it's a golf cigar and a good, you know, out, I had mine out by the pool yesterday and, you know, it was really nice, you know, just kind of sit outside and not have to think about anything and just enjoy this cigar. So I say, you know, definitely it's a really good, really good smoke for the money. And, um, and I like, I like a lot of Estelle Patron stuff and I like Honduran uh, tobacco. And so it's got a lot of stuff that I like. So I'm a little biased. In terms of the blend, it's good. It's good. I'd say you know, grab it. And it's also in in five sizes, so you know you have your choose uh, your pick of the litter if you want. And, uh, yeah. Choose the yeah. bigger size. The bigger size. Well, most of them are bigger sizes, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you probably won't miss out on that. You know. All right, so that's it for the Boulevard Cofradia Churchill. Remember, you can buy all Boulevard cigars, that Boulevard Cofradia, that is, at famous-smoke.com. And when you're at famous-smoke.com, please make sure that you sign up and get that free catalog because there's some great deals in there. And if you want more cigar advice and information, visit us at cigaradvisor.com. Remember, you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. And if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to 
like our YouTube page, subscribe to it, and make sure you get our notifications. And like this video, because we like that too. And that's about it for today for our review. And we'll see you next time on CigarAdvisor.com. Thanks for watching. Jerry, thank you. John, thank you. See you next time. Happy smokes.